Hey guys, Carbon Mohan here. I definitely want to thank you guys for tuning into my channel. And you guys are going to want to subscribe because I'm giving you guys a lot of valuable content. I'm working really hard to help you guys learn a little bit more about finances, about taxes, about credit. I want you guys to get started on the right foot when it comes to building wealth, learning different strategies, learning how to access money, learning how to invest your money. I'm going above and beyond to show that to you guys because a lot of the times we aren't educated in these topics. So my name is Carmen Mohan. This is my channel. Tune in. So today's topic is going to be about IRS audits. Now, none of us like to get audited. We have those nasty little correspondences that come in the mail and the IRS wants to seek more proof. Let's talk about 10 red flags that the IRS is going to be watching out for. Number one, your income is higher than average. If you have a large change in your income from the prior year, that will definitely cause a red flag for the IRS to audit you. Number two, let's talk about deductions. If your deductions are out of proportion to your total income, then that's another cause for the IRS to audit you. What do, we, what do we mean out of proportion? Now, we don't want you to itemize half of your total income because that doesn't make sense. Audit flag number three, numbers on your tax return that have been rounded or averaged. What does that mean? When you're writing a list of your write-offs or deductions, you're gonna wanna put exact numbers. So if you spent $3,245 in supplies, you want to write down that exact number. You don't want to just write down $3,500, round it up, or you don't want to round it down to $3,000. You want to have the exact number from your bank statements to report on your tax return. Because this way, if the IRS does audit you, you do have that hard evidence proof that that's exactly what you spent as your write-off. Number four, home office deductions. Now you may say to me, well, Carmen, I work from home, so why can't I write off my home office deduction? I'm not saying that you can't write it off, but what I am saying is that's one of the IRS tax write-offs that tend to be most misused. So if you are going to write off your home office business expense, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you use that area, designated area, really for work purposes. You're gonna to wanna to have some type of signage on that door to make sure that it does reflect that it is a home office. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that that space is dedicated to an office. What does that mean? Computer desk, computer chair, computer, bookshelf, anything that an office would have, printer, scanner, copier, these are all hardcore evidence for you to beat this IRS audit. Claiming a business loss every year. Now, we all know that as a new entrepreneur, as a new business owner, you may have a business loss. You may have invested money in a business or company and not have actually made a profit. That would be deemed a net operating loss. But if you do a business loss for five years, you're basically telling the government every year you invest your money and haven't made a dollar since. Now, we all know that for five years that business loss may or may not have happened, but however, we don't want you to get these red flags. We don't want you to be audited by the IRS. So you're gonna to wanna to be careful when it comes to taking business losses. And if you are gonna claim a business loss for multiple years, make sure that you have the exact numbers to claim and make sure that those numbers are reflected off of your business bank account so that you have the hardcore evidence proof. Number six, excessive deductions for entertainment. Now, we all know you may have to sit down and have a dinner meeting or sit down and have dinner cocktails with a business partner, a potential partner, a potential client. Yes, those are real life expenses. However, you can't tell the IRS you spend $20,000 a year on business entertainment expenses and you only made $2,000. That's not gonna make sense because if you spend $20,000 on trying to gain potential clients or potential investors or potential business partners, where's the money that you're making? The IRS is gonna view your return and red flag you for an audit if you have very high entertainment costs. That is another deduction or write-off that is constantly abused. So you're not gonna to wanna to be part of that factor. Number seven, let's talk about claiming the use of your vehicle for 100% business use. 
Now, some of us may use our vehicles for business use, especially us as entrepreneurs. Now, what happens if we use our cars for our personal errands, like going to the laundromat to drop off your clothes or dropping off your children at school? That doesn't mean that 100% of that use of that vehicle is for business, now does it? So we're definitely gonna wanna stay away from that red flag and really try to determine how much percentage of our vehicle do we use for business purposes. Number eight, let's say you made a lot less money the prior year. Any large changes made from the prior year to the current year is gonna automatically red flag the IRS. They're gonna see a huge change in your income and they're gonna say, whoa, what's going on here? That's a that's a lot less money than they've made the prior year. Let's red flag them and take an audit. You may think you can only get red flagged when you make a lot more money, but sometimes making a lot less money will also red flag them as well. So you want to make sure to steer clear out of making up numbers on your return and actually filing what is due to you. Number nine, self-employed. If you're a self-employed business owner, you are gonna be scrutinized heavier because the IRS knows that it's easier for you guys to make up write-offs. Now you wanna make sure that you are actually keeping your business income and expenses organized correctly so that it could help you to avoid all these cases. If you have your business income and expenses organized correctly, then your statement should be able to prove all income coming in and all expenses going out. Number 10, charitable contributions. Let's say you've been a little bit more generous this year when it comes to church ties or Salvation Army donation drop-offs or donating vehicles to different causes. That's all great. However, when the IRS sees excessive charitable contributions, they're definitely gonna scrutinize you a little bit more and wanna see proof. That's definitely a red flag for an audit. Either way, 10 red flags, don't want to miss them, don't want to make sure that you don't red flag the IRS government. We don't want you guys to get audited. Now, auditing is not a scary topic. As long as you have the hardcore evidence proof, you can flight any audit at any given time. So, thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for watching this whole video. And if you message me now within the next 24 to 48 hours, I'm going to give you a free gift. I'm going to give you an ebook on how to properly handle your business taxes. So, subscribe to my channel. Check me out on YouTube at Miss Carmen Mohan. You can find me on all social media platforms. Definitely want to subscribe and hit the like button below. Till next time, guys.